Hello everyone, it's Laura here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video I'm gonna show you how to make a card and a set of coordinating tags using distress inks as well as dice and stamps by Studio Katia. As a first step I am heat embossing some of the images from the Studio Katia Mary Poinsettia stamp set on some Canson XL watercolor cardstock because I'm going to do some watercoloring with distress inks later on. So I first prepped my surface with an anti-static powder tool. I stamped my images with Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink. And now I am coating them with wet embossing powder by Ranger. And finally, using my heat gun to heat set the wet embossing powder. I also decided to add a couple more leaves, so I am stamping them with my acrylic block. Uh, this is also by Studio Katia. Uh, because it was just simpler than doing it with the Misty. And again, coating the stamp image with wet embossing powder and it setting it. And finally, I'm repeating the same steps again on some vellum this time, using a different image still from the Mary Poinsettia stamp set. And while I'm doing the stamping and the prepping, and the coating, I have my heat gun running on the side so that I'm sure that it's nice and hot once I start using it to melt the embossing powder. And this helps reduce the warping because your embossing powder will melt quicker and you'll have to apply less heat to your cardstock or vellum, whatever you're using. Once I was done with all the heat embossing, I started watercoloring my images and this time I'm using my distress inks. For the petals I am using candied apple and aged mahogany and I am using the wet on wet technique. This basically means that I am first laying down a layer of clean clear water and just after that I am coming in with the pigments. So, to give dimension to the images, I am first laying down the colors where I think the shadows will be. I then clean off my brush to remove the excess pigment and then use the brush to drag the color a bit towards the highlight areas. So here I laid down the pigment where I think the shadows will be. You saw me clean, more or less, saw me clean the paintbrush on the side and you see that I am dragging a little bit of the colors toward the center of the petal. And I don't have to worry as much about bleeding because I have these heat embossed lines which are raised and act sort of like a barrier for the pigment and the water so that I don't have to be as careful as I would be if I had stamped these images with like Versa Fine Ink or Ranger Archivo Ink. So this makes the job a little bit easier. I was there lifting a little bit of the pigment on that bottom petal because I felt it was a little bit too flat. But at this point I am not worrying too much about the contrast because I know that I will add the second layer of color afterwards. I will now leave you with some music to enjoy the rest of the painting process. I will pop in here and there to sort of draw your attention to a couple of things that I wanted to uh, show you or to mention. But other than that, I'll catch you guys when it's time to assemble the card.
And this is where I realized that I had smudged some of the candida pole next to those holly berries. And I just wanted to show you how easy it was to clean it off. I basically just reactivated the color with some clean clear water and I used the clean towel to dab the excess off and it looks as if nothing has happened. And to add a little bit of texture to the leaves and have them look a little bit more realistic, I am using a very fine tip paintbrush, which I dipped in the forest moss distress ink. And I'm using that to add a few strokes to the two ends of the leaves. And also I will be following the lines that are already there in the stamps that run you know, across the center of the leaf and sort of stem from there. And I will sort of reinforce those lines to, again, give a little bit more texture to the leaves and make them look more like real leaves, I guess. Once I was done with the painting and everything was dry, I went ahead and die cut everything with the coordinating dies. I always like to secure them with some washi tape and then I run everything through my die cutting machine. For my card base, I decided to use the Darling Ribbon and Dotted Frames die set by Studio Katia. And before going ahead and cutting my Nina Desert Storm cardstock, I am making sure that things look nice together. So I'm arranging the flowers in the way in which I want them on my final card. And because I liked it, I went ahead and die cut my cardstock. I reproduced the arrangement as well and took a picture with my phone so that I'd be able to use that as a reference later on when I will go ahead and start adhering my images. I decided to use the Be Merry sentiment from the Studio Katia Mary Poinsettia stamp set and to heat emboss it with white embossing powder. So again, I stamped it with Versamark ink, uh, coated it with this white embossing powder by Ranger and melted everything with my heat gun. And I thought this would tie nicely with the flowers and the other heat embossed elements that I have on my card. To add a little bit more interest and fun to this card, I decided to pop this front panel on some fun foam. So I am using a pencil to trace the shape of the panel on the fun foam and then I will cut the shape using my scissors. And I am you know, cutting a little bit inside with respect to the lines I traced because I don't want obviously the foam to show through. And if there are any pieces hanging off, I will just trim them off with my scissors. But I think this looks overall cleaner than using strips of 3D foam tape. But you can obviously also use that. It's, you know, it's just a matter of personal preference. 
I wanted to add some splatters to my uh, card base so I used some white acrylic paint which I diluted with some water and sort of splashed <laughs> on my background using a paintbrush, a soft paintbrush and once the acrylic was completely dry I went ahead and I glued my front panel this time using some liquid adhesive because that gives me some time to wiggle things in place because I'm never extremely precise with the placement of elements I'm using Tombow Monomute glue to adhere the painted images on the card and I'm using the reference picture on my phone to reproduce the arrangement I had you know previously designed and for those vellum pieces I only added multimedia matte by Ranger in the areas that are now hidden by the painted flowers so the part of the uh, vellum flowers that you see has no glue at all because it's actually pretty difficult to add glue to vellum in a way that it doesn't show so I thought this would uh, do the job and as a final piece of embellishment I'm adding some white crystals these are also by Studio Katia and I find that the easiest way to do this is to use the pick me up tool in combination with this quickie glue pen and I decided to create some coordinating tags so I hit embossed more of the images from the Mary Poinsettia stamp set on some vellum using white embossing powder again and I also created sort of masks uh, for these flowers using the dies that coordinate with the stamp set I cut the tags out of some Nina Desert Storm cardstock using tag dies by Studio Katia and I added some splatters using white acrylic paint and I used those masks so that I wouldn't have any of the splatters showing through the vellum where I, I'm going to adhere the flowers because I thought I would have a cleaner look this way and to adhere the flowers because pretty much any adhesive you put on vellum is going to show through I decided to use multi-medium matte by Ranger but to only add it to the central part of the flowers because that's sort of a bit more crowded and I thought I would get away with adding the glue there uh, without being able to see it and actually you know I don't really think you can you notice it so that was a good solution I also die cut the word joy this comes in the coordinating die set to the Mary Poinsettia stamp set I die cut the word out of some white cardstock and I'm using again these white crystals to add the dot on top of the joy word using white glue and a fine tip applicator because this die cut is so nice and delicate and again the pick me up tool is really really handy when dealing with small uh, embellishments like this and finally to add a little bit of red to the tags too I decided to use some embroidery floss and I threaded it through the eyelets on top of the tags I was also able to peel off the joy die cut word on the left tag uh, I removed the excess paper that had stayed attached to the tag with the Tombow sand eraser very very delicately and then I adhered it I mean I die cut another word and I adhered that um, in the same orientation that you see on the right tag and I like it much better this way and that's it for today I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful if so please let me know in the comments below leave this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel you can visit my blog for the full list of supplies and I hope I'll be back soon with another video ciao